So you shoot or you want to shoot wildlife photography and you pick yourself up a new Z8 or Z9 and you want to know how to set it up or you just want to try something new or you want to know how I set mine up for wildlife photography. Well, that's what this video is about. And this video also is including the 4.0 bird update firmware on this thing because that changes the way we set up our cameras for wildlife photography. So let's talk about it. There's a lot in this video, so make sure you use the chapters to jump around in the video where you need to jump around for the part of the video that you need to look at or revisit later. This is going to be a two-part series. This is the first part, which will be the setup, the how and why we set the camera up, or why I set the camera up this way for what I use it for. And the second part of this video, the second video will probably come out next week, will be taking this out with these settings out in the field, how we use it out in the field. Before we get started, let's talk about my philosophy for setting up cameras for wildlife photography, how I set them up. And for me, I subscribe to an 80-20 rule. And what that means is I want the camera set up where I can move my, just small adjustments and keep my eye in the viewfinder 80% of the time. The other 20% of the time is if I have to take my eye away from the viewfinder and change some settings in the camera to something else drastically. And what I want to do is I want to stretch that goal to a 90% to a 10% rule. 90% time, small adjustments in the eye. And that's with over the last year, I've come up with this camera, the settings, the way I use it. As for my shooting needs, I need two things. If you watch any of my videos, you'll know I like to keep it simple. So I need two things. I need a reliable subject detection where the camera's gonna find what I'm looking for. And the second thing is I need a single point where I tell it where to go to get to that plane of focus, because that's what we need to do. We need to get to a plane of focus. Whether the subject detect is getting to that plane of focus or the single point is getting me to that plane of focus. And I also want to be where I can change all my settings in the viewfinder to not take my eye off the viewfinder. So if you keep your eye on the viewfinder, you're not going to miss shots. We'll also talk about one thing I see a lot of people doing wrong with subject detection on our modern mirrorless cameras. I'll also show you how to apply firmware and to reset your camera back to defaults, which is what I really suggest if you're going to do a new camera setup. Before we get into the setup of the Z8 Z9, if you've been enjoying the channel, please hit subscribe and hit that notification button so you know if more videos come out as we release them. And we usually release videos on Sunday, but I'm going to start here in the next couple of months. I mean, for the next two months, I'm probably going to release some videos twice a week. So make sure you hit the notification button so you'll be able to know when those videos are going to come out. It'll alert you if they came out. And if you want to support the channel monetarily, then think about becoming a member. Uh, it just costs as low as a dollar a month, and then just helps us get more content out because getting these videos out and making these trips gets a little expensive at times. Oh, and we hit 10,000 subscribers and have a couple surprise giveaways. And uh, of course, the prints like we always give away. Uh, so hopefully we hit that before Christmas. Okay, back to the setup. These settings we're going to do should work on the Z8 and the Z9. We're going to be using the Z9 going through these settings. If you see a setting that doesn't quite work right on the Z8, just leave it to me down in the comments what you saw differently, and we'll address that there in the comments. First, I'm going to show you how to reset the camera, and I suggest you reset your camera before you go doing new settings. That way you don't have an old setting that conflicts with the new settings you're setting up. And what's cool with the Z9, you can actually save your settings to a card. And if you do all the settings, you don't like them, you can go revert back to your old settings. So we're going to walk through that real quick. All right, the first thing we're going to do is going to hit the menu button. And the first thing you're going to do is going to go down at the wrench icon. You're going to go all the way down to the bottom, one off the bottom. It's called Save Load Menu Settings. So you're going to hit that. And you're going to click Save Menu Settings. And that's it. It's saved them. It saved them to your SD card. So don't worry about that SD card. Now we're going to go down one to reset those settings. So go down to reset all settings, one below it, click that, hit reset, hit yes, it's going to be restored, hit that. So what it's going to do here, it's going to go to reset complete, it says turn the camera off. So now you turn your camera off, then turn it back on, and now our camera is set back to default. Now we're going to show you how to do the firmware on the Z9 and Z8. So the first thing you do is hit the menu button again, go back down to the wrench icon, and go to the very bottom. And we're going to go to firmware version. Click that button, go down to update, hit update. It's going to ask you, do you want to go from 4.0 to 4.1? Hopefully you're at 4.0 already. Go up that and hit OK. That's all you got to do. Hit that and wait. So now it's going to tell you, telling you it's updating. So you just wait for it to finish updating. All right, that took a while, but now the update's complete. So the next thing you do after it completes, it says turn the camera off. So you turn your camera off and then turn it back on. So now we have a clean slate to work with on this camera and we have the 4.10 software, the latest software. So when you're gonna set these up, reset the camera, apply the latest firmware, whatever it is the time right now is 4.10 and you're good to go. So the very first thing we're gonna do is hit the menu button. We're going to the photo shooting menu. 
which is the very top, looks like camera, it's the green menu. We're going to go down to the very first thing we're going to look at is the role played by card in slot, wherever you got your cards. And now we're going to set this to overflow. Now with the Z9, you can set this to any of these modes in here and be fine if you want to do to both cards at the same time, because you can use two type B cards in here. With the Z8, I advise you to use overflow, not the backup method. The reason that is, Z8 has a type B and an SD card. If you have it to any of the other modes besides overflow, you're going to be as slow as that SD card, not the type B card. So if you leave it in overflow, you're going to have the full speed of that type B card. It's 1500 or whatever it's writing to. Pretty much had unlimited shots when you're holding down that shutter button. So that's why I leave mine in overflow. Next thing we're going to do is go down to image area and make sure that's in FX, which means full frame. If you go to the right on that, that's where you can set your camera to crop, DX mode, which is what DX means crop on Nikon. Let's go back again. So we got our area chose to FX. Now we're going down to image quality. We want to change this one. So if you want to shoot JPEG, you can pick any of these methods, but I shoot in RAW only. In the RAW, that's so I can get the best out of my images where I've got all my shadows, my highlights to work with when I get to Lightroom or Photoshop. Next thing you go down to is RAW recordings. We're going to set this one. So click that button. I set my camera to lossless compression is what I do. So that gives me the best quality, the, the biggest, highest bang for the buck, the biggest file size. You can do the star or the high fishes if you want, but I set mine to lossless compression. And also it helps me when I get into DxO Pure All, so I get the more that it can work with to recover the colors, the noise, and all that fun stuff. So the next thing we're going to change is focus mode. So change this. So AFS means a single shot. That's like you're doing landscapes. You take one shot, hit the focus, it's going to go to that focus button, won't keep focusing anymore. It'll get that lock and stop. So we're going to go to AFC, continuous autofocus. This is what we want. We got something in motion, and we want that thing to track it all the way. So keep it AFC. So the next thing we're going to go to is the AF area mode. We're going to click that, and I'm going to go down. I set my camera for default to wide area L. You can change it any other size of box. What that does is put a box in the middle where I can get a subject, and it'll find the subject. If it's within around that box, it's going to lock onto that subject. Now, with the new bird auto detect and all that stuff, and we will talk about that later, you can use the auto area AF. But for the most part, I use the wide L. And when we get out in the field more and we set the buttons up later, we'll talk more about why and when I use the different focus methods. So for now, we're going to set that to wide area AFL. AF subject detection options. Let's talk about those real quick. So one I never use is the very first one, auto. I don't like the auto. It takes too long to find a subject. If I'm shooting anything that's not a bird, as far as animals, as wildlife photography we're talking about, not talking about auto photography, not talking about planes or people, we're talking about wildlife, right? So it's animals and birds. If it's not a bird, it's an animal all the time, right? If I'm shooting birds, I'm not shooting birds, I set it to birds. So definitely if you're shooting birds, change this to birds. It is night and day from animal to birds if you're shooting a bird. So make sure birds, enter this again, put it in bird if you're shooting birds, all right? We're going to leave an animal right now because it's my 80-20. So let's say I'm just going out walking. I don't know what I'm going to see. I'll keep it an animal. If I do need to change it to birds, I can quickly change it to birds if I need to. So we'll set that to animal for now. There's nothing else in the photo shooting menu that I changed. So now let's go down to the video recording menu. The very first thing we're going to change in the video recording menu is going to be video file type. And this depends on which editor you're using. If you're using DaVinci, uh, resolve and things like that. You can go up here and hit in raw and use that. Now, if you're using Final Cut Pro, you can't use in raw because Final Cut Pro will not read it. So, what you do is uh, for me, I use Final Cut Pro with Max. I'm going to set mine to H265 10 bit. And the reason that is the only two things that'll do 4K 120 frames a second, which gives us that real slow motion, is going to be 265 10 bit or in raw. So let's set that to H265 for me, 10 bit. Now for any of these, you can actually right click here also on the by the OK button again, and that'll give you the tone modes, which means HLG in log, which is the log profile or SDR. I'm gonna leave mine in SDR, which means I don't have to color grade. If I put it in log, I'm gonna have to color grade later, which a lot of people, if you're gonna push it a little bit more, put it in log and put a lot on there, It'll learn how to color grade. But for now, we're going to leave an SDR, let the camera decide the colors. Nikon does really good colors in that stuff, so I don't lose too much by leaving an SDR. 
All right, for the frame size and the frame rate. So you want to go in here and set it to one of the higher things at 120 frames per second. So for me, 265 is going to be 3840 by 2160 at 120 p. If you're shooting in the in raw, it's going to be a little higher bit rate, but look for the 120 p. And that's it. Now for the video quality in raw, this is where you, I just leave it a high quality. That should be default. The image area again is your full frame or your DX. Make sure it's in FX. Focus mode AFF is where you want to be. It's full time autofocus. That's where video works. The AF area mode, you're definitely going to change this one. So what I change this one to is auto area AF. I want to just look all over the screen and find whatever it does, because pretty much it's going to be doing this stuff automatically for me. I'm not really going to be telling it where to focus. It should just find what's in the frame. Next thing we're going to do is going to AF subject detection options. Now, again, we're going to set this to animals, but if I was shooting birds, I'd make sure I set it to birds. So just like with, with the photo side, the video side, Animals, if you're just shooting general stuff, if you're shooting birds, change it to birds. For now, we're going to put it to animal. Next one to change is the wind noise reduction. Make sure that's set to off. If you turn it on, sometimes it's going to kind of chop your voice or chop the things off. Um, you can do the noise isolation in Final Cut Pro or DaVinci Resolve if you need to do it later. So leave that off. So that's all there is for the video recording menu. So now let's go down to the pencil looking icon to the custom setting menu. This is where we get to have the fun stuff. We're going to start assigning buttons and things like that. And the focus. The first thing we do is go down to focus. So the first thing we do is A1, AFC priority selection. We're going to make sure that's only set to release, which that means is we hit that shutter button, it's just going to take a picture. That's all it's going to do. Next thing we go down to is focus tracking with lock on. And this is where you can change it to more erratic, uh, how quick or how slow you want it to grab, to grab and let go or keep hold of something. So you want delayed, you want it to hold on longer. So it's flying behind trees and stuff, a little more delayed. If you want it to switch subjects, you want it to quick. I leave mine to three. I leave it in the middle. It's worked really good for me. I've never changed the setting here. But this is where you can change it to be something that's steady or something that's erratic. If you've got a real erratic bird, you can change it down here. You can move it over to erratic if you want. But I leave mine on steady, leave it on three. I'm pretty good so far. So let's get out of this menu. Next thing to do is go down to limit AF area mode selection. All right. So this is the one where I'll turn certain things off. So I turn off all the dynamic ones. I don't use the dynamic. So this is one where you can turn off things you'll never use. And actually, I'm going to turn off wide area S also. Because I just use the L's, the customs, 3D tracking, auto area AF, and single point. Basically, what you're doing here is you just take everything out you don't want to use. That you not, you're not going to use. That's what you do there. So let's get out of this menu now. So that's all we're going to do in the focus section. Now we're going to go into section C, which is timers, auto exposure, lock. And the first one we're going to go down, down here is a power off delay. And the only thing I go in here and change the standby timer from 30 seconds to one minute, sometimes five minutes. Usually just do one. The reason I do that is because I hate when my screen turns off in 30 seconds. A, a minute usually is pretty good for me, so I just don't want to turn off. So that's all I'm doing there is turning when this back screen times out and goes where I have to hit the focus button, ray button to bring the, the screen back up. So that's all I'm setting there to one minute. Next, we're going down to shooting display. And this is where you hit continuous shooting. So this is where you can set it up for how many frames per second you're going to shoot. So continuous high speed, I'll leave in 20. I do change continuous low speed from 5 to 10. So there we go. So I want to shoot 10 frames a second or 20 frames a second, not 5 and 20. I almost always shoot in 20. I almost never change it to 5 or 10, but this is where I would set it if I wanted to change this. When you change the dial on top up here, you change this from L to H. If you're in L, you're at 10. If you're in H, you're in 20. That's what that does. Next one going down to is custom monitor shooting display. It's D19. So we hit OK on that. And what we do here is I've got that little circle in there. I want to get rid of that circle. So we're going to take that circle out. And I'm also going to turn off a couple of these that I don't want to see when I go through. So when you hit the display button, that's what's going to cycle through the different screens you see. So the first one's good. The next one I'm going to turn off. I don't want that one. Three is fine. Four is fine. And five is fine. Now, we're going to go up to one, display one. And we're going to push this OK thing to the right. And we're going to go into the very last menu, that one that's like a little, that icon there, hit that. That's going to get rid of that round ring. You see it disappear? So we're going to go back, and we're going to do this for three. Same thing, go to the bottom, uncheck that. We're going to go down here to four. I'm just going to keep repeating this every time. Hit the thing to the right. That's off there by default. Go down to five. It's not there. So custom video shooting display, same exact thing. We're going to... See which one's going to turn off to. We're going to leave one, three, and four on. 
So one, I'm gonna hit to the right. I'm gonna go to the very bottom, I'm gonna uncheck that box, get rid of the ring. Go down to three, same thing to the right. The last one, uncheck, get rid of the ring. And on four, it's already gone. So we're good there. That's just me, I hate seeing that ring. It's a little more clutter for me. Next we're gonna change is high DPS viewfinder display, it's D21. We're gonna set this to on. What that does, it gives you 120 megahertz refresh. When it's off, it's 60 megahertz refresh. What this helps you when you're shooting 20 frames a second, it's just a little smoother with the screen, what you're seeing. Now we're gonna go down to F, which is controls. And we're going down to custom controls shooting. This is the important part. This is where we're gonna assign our buttons, how I, at least how I assign my buttons. You can tweak this how you want, but this is how I set mine up. And we'll talk a little bit about why I set them up and where I set them up and that. And then when we get to the next video where I'm out in the field, it'll make a lot more sense. And we're doing it in real life applications of something in the field. So we're gonna hit F2, we're gonna hit that menu. So FN1 is the first thing we're gonna change on here. And that's the front button right up here. All right, we're gonna go up here to AF area mode plus AF on. If you do just AF area, it's not gonna do anything. You want the AF area mode plus AF on. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna assign this to the single point. Bam, done. So what that does is when I have my back button AF on, that's when it's gonna be subject to tech, the wide L or the auto area F. But if I need to take it, I need to hit a spot, a branch, a log, something to get me to the focal plane. So if the bird's here, my focus is somewhere over here. I get a single point, hit the branch, the bird's here, I'm on the branch. And now I'm on the focal plane. So one or two things, I can either make it where it gets to that focal plane so the auto detect will find it faster, or I had to hit it to get through the branches to get to the plane of focus for that bird. So that's why I sat there and it sets really easy. So it's just basically, I just have that middle finger right there sitting right on that FN1 at all times. And my top button's on my shutter, my back button's on the F on. That's where my finger's sitting all the time. So that's where we set that. All right, the next one we're gonna change is FN2. It's to the right of the FN1 button. This is the one where I assign my 3D tracking. All right, we're gonna find that same one, that AF area mode plus AF on. Make sure it says the plus AF on or it won't do it. What that does is it selects that 3D or single point, like I said a second ago, it's gonna do it and it's gonna initiate that mode. So if I hit that single point with AF area mode, all it's gonna do is switch to AF area mode. It's not gonna do anything. But if I have the plus AF on, I hit that button, it's gonna go single point and focus on single point. Same thing with 3D. So we're gonna hit this, we're gonna go all the way to the bottom. One up is 3D AF on. So now if I hit my F in two button, I hit that, now I'm gonna have 3D tracking. I hit it, it's gonna do 3D tracking, whatever I'm hit on. All right, the next one we're gonna do is we're gonna set the joystick, the center of the joystick. So if you go down the left menu, you'll find it looks like a little circle with a little dot in the middle. Let's hit that. And we're gonna go down to, there's one called recenter. Let's see if we can find it. All right, there it is. It's called reset, select center focus point. So what that means is, if we've got our focus point sitting on the bottom left or somewhere, if we hit, you hit that joystick button, it's gonna put it right back in the center for us. So we get recentered. There's many times the joystick, you've heard me many times, I hate joysticks because as I'm shooting, my finger's hitting that and it starts pushing the bottom left, starts pushing more and more, my focus point's center in the bottom left. And then when I hit 3D or something, it's not finding it because I'm expecting to be in the middle. So if I hit that button, it's gonna jump back to the middle or I can move it around. But that helps me get my focus point back where I can see it. Sometimes it gets hit in the bottom behind menus. So that's why I do it there. Next thing we're gonna change is our dials, which is down here in this little icon, this little thing back and forth. Gonna hit this. And we're going to exposure setting. We're going all the way over to M. Now I shoot manual all the time. So make sure your camera's in manual when you're doing all this. Um, so what I've got here, I just put one up. I want TV on the top, AV on the bottom. What that means is this dial up front is going to be my uh, shutter speed and the one in the back is going to be my aperture and then my iso of course is going to be on the top of the dial now we'll set one more button we're going to go up and set that fn3 button real quick which i said i wasn't going to do but we're going to set it real quick let's set this so what that's going to do if i hit the fn3 or i hit the button here on the side either one of them what you're going to see is up here on top you get that it turns yellow. If I hit the FN3, it does the same thing. So I have two ways of being in this menu. If I've got my hand on the lens, now I can hit the FN3 and run the dials and move that to a different mode. But if I'm on a tripod, I can hit this one over here. So now I've got two ways to hit that to change. I want to go from wide L to the auto area AF. Now let's go down to video. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to go to custom controls.
And so we're gonna set the same stuff up. There's really not a whole lot to change here except for one thing. We're gonna find that shutter button. There it is. So on shutter button, all I'm gonna do is hit change it to record video. So what that does is if I hit the shutter button or the red button up top here, either one of them is gonna start recording video. So that's all I change there. Everything else I just leave where it is. So that's all we're in the custom shooter menu. All our buttons are assigned, everything's set up. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to the wrench icon, which is going to be the setup menu. And the first thing we're gonna change is sensor shield behavior at power off. We're gonna turn that to sensor shield close. If you don't do that, when you take your lens off, or turn the camera off, you're gonna see your sensor. But if you hit this to on, when you turn your camera off, whatever, or your lens pops off, it will actually close that sensor shield for you. Next thing we're going to do is camera sounds. So shutter sound on, volume I set mine to two, and I set my type to B. You can choose whichever you want, play with different sounds, but I think I like B the best. That's the one that's best for me anyway. So believe it or not, this camera is now set up. We're good to go. This thing's completely set up for how I shoot in the field. The settings are all done. So really quickly to walk you through how I use this camera in the field. And we'll also have another whole video where we'll go out and practically do this in the field. We'll find birds, moose, maybe some decoys to show you different methods of how to use this and methods to use this camera. So how do I use it? Well, for starters, whenever I hold my camera up, I'm on a subject. The very first thing I'll do, I'll always talk tap the FN1 single point. I'll tap it close to something. So if I've got a bird sitting, this is something sitting, animal walking, bird sitting in a tree, things like that. I'll real quickly pull my camera up and tap that single point on something close to the moose. Maybe I'll hit the moose or whatever, or a bear, or if it's a bird in a tree or something, or on the rocks, I'll hit a rock near it or a tree limb near it, or tap right on it if I can see it. Why? That gets that focal plane closer to that bird so that thing has less to look through so that it's already almost in focus so the focus system will grab it easier. I do it on the Canon and I really do it on the Nikon, heavily do it on the Nikon. So once I do that, after that, I hit my AF on button. I've got my wide L box sitting there. I hit the AF on button and it should find the animal, should grab it. Now, one of the things it may do at times, because I say this is different, is the Nikon, I'll use it where I'll use that wide L box, kind of like we used to do with the autofocuses when we had the older DSLR cameras where I'm setting the focus to an area. Because really what you want to do is get to a focal plane. And this is where I talked about earlier in the video where I see a lot of people doing this one thing exactly wrong. And we'll talk about it here in just a second. But what I do, tap it, get close, hit the AF on for the focus method, the auto area AF or the wide L to get that subject and to get a gold box to lock up the eye, hopefully. Now, what do I see people doing wrong? They treat the subject detect, the auto button, Canon, Nikon, Sony, all of them, like it's the magic button. As long as you hold it down, it should find the subject, should just lock on it. What you find with the Nikon, the animals, especially we've done birds in the past until the, AI, the new 4.1 came out, the autofocus would be on the bird, then it would jump somewhere else. Canon, same thing. Uh, the R7, I have a video out very soon about the R7 and this autofocus, why it moves around a little bit. There's a reason why it moves around, it's because you're using the camera we're using the autofocus buttons, the quote magic subject detection button, it's not magic. It's used to get to the focus plane and that's it. It's not meant to constantly sit there. So what's happening is the algorithm is cameras and machine learning says, here's what a bird or a bear looks like or a fox. It says this is where an eye should be. And what you'll notice on fox sometimes, it'll grab the tip of the ear because it's black or it may grab its tail sometimes. So it depends on how far the fox, the far as fox is farther away. The cadence used to do this a lot. It used to grab the ears almost all the time rather than the eye when it was at a dis dis different distance from you. Uh, over time with firmware, it stopped doing that. It was grabbing the eye. Nikon would do the same thing sometimes at a distance. It'll grab the ear or grab the eye. So the algorithm is looking for those things. So if you're just holding that down the whole time, it's going to start jumping. And if the animal's got its head a different way, that could be, you know, a few inches if you're really close to the animal. If you're farther away, usually the focal plane's got the whole head, but that's what it is. And if you've got, like I had woodpeckers in the past, where it saw the woodpecker, but also a knot on the log on the tree, and it would, couldn't decide which one was the bird. And if it locked on the knot of the tree, it was too far behind the bird, the bird's out of focus, the tree knot was in focus. So the reason I'm saying that is, you hit the AF on button, you get the eye, get your finger off the F on button, if that bird or that moose is not moving outside of that focal plane, 
don't need to be hitting the, auto, the AF on button, the subject attack button. Because again, the whole point is to get to that focal plane and stay there, right? So once you hit that focal plane, get your fingers off the focus buttons. Get your hands off of there. As long, now if that bird moves or moose moves forward or back, then tap the AF on again to get the lock in that focal plane. If it's moving, AF on. If it's not moving outside your focal plane, and learn what your focal planes are. Uh, here's an example. We were shooting the muskox, and we were talking about when to hold the buttons, which buttons to hit. Uh, one of the one of the folks had a brand new Z9, learning how to use it, and I, and I was talking about that setup of. If she looked at her picture of her muskox, I was looking, the rocks in front of the muskox were in focus, the ones a little bit behind his head were in focus. So as long as the, the muskox didn't move its head in front of that rock or behind the other rock, you don't need to hit the autofocus again. Get it there, leave it, take your pictures. If it starts to move outside of that, hit the focus again, kind of pay attention to what areas are in focus, out of focus, and then adjust accordingly. So that's the one thing I see people you doing wrong a lot with modern mirrorless cameras. They're using an AF on button like it's a magic, magic button. It is not a magic button. It is magic because it grab an eye, but invariably it's going to jump off that eye and you're going to miss some of your pictures. So get your focus plane, get the heck off the button. If it moves a little bit, hit the button again. That's what you do. And the other little trick is hit that single point to get closer to that because what happens sometimes, and it used to happen a lot with birds before the new 4.1, like I said, if the bird was out of focus, it would probably focus past the bird in the background or stay focused on something in the foreground, may not go to the bird, may not see the bird. But if I had a single point on a log or something close to that bird, it would jump to it every time, even before 4.10. So that's just a quick trick to get there. In times when you're not locking onto something, like it locked on the wrong spot, is single point something near the animal, then you can get back on that at that. But that's the way you do it. You don't hit that a lot. So now, when do I use 3D tracking? Well, you know, use 3D tracking if the subject is like a bear or something, something bigger that I can put that box on and get that FN2 and get it locked up, which is my 3D tracking on FN2. And say I need to position the animal to the far left or the bird where I'm going to do some type of environmental shot where it's over here on the left. That's when I would use it there to reframe my subject. But really, if I use my AF on or my auto area AF, I can let off and move, reframe my subject because he's real still in the same focal plane. Or I can move my wide area box over to the left and get focused and grab him where it needs to be. So that's how I use it. But anyway, guys, that's how I have my camera set up. That's how I use it. It is real simple. I've got the single point. I've got the AF on. I've got my shutter speed up here at front. I've got my aperture back here. Hit my ISO button, roll that to change my ISO in full manual. And that's what I use it for. And inside my viewfinder the whole time, I have my histogram and my level and all that stuff. And I can see my settings at the bottom as far as my aperture shutter and my ISO. So I can see all those things in there. And if I need to change from wide L to auto area AF, I can hit FN3 or I can hit this button here on the side. So now I can change it from wide L to auto area AF or any of the other focus modes that I need. But those right there suit me for 90% of the time shooting animals and birds, changing those two focus modes, change from animal to bird, those focused settings. And I'm golden. I usually do not miss shots and I don't have shots out of focus with this camera. Well, that's how I use it. So look for the next video, which is going to be going out in the field, applying all these together. We'll talk about when I'm using it, when I'm jumping between the single point and the auto detection. Those two go hand in hand. You got to learn to really get back and forth between the two because you a lot of times when you got birds, especially birds in trees or foxes in busy areas or muskox behind things when you're trying to do foreground elements, background elements, you're going to really need to use that single point and that auto detection together. So look for that video coming up soon. And as always, guys, if you join the channel, subscribe, like, think about coming to remember all those fun things, and I'll see you on the next video. So get outside and go run that shutter.